Hello, my name is Nathan Rossman, design engineer working with Paul Downs Cabinet Makers. I am in the center of the screen. I've been working with Paul since 1999. Charlene, uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to get involved in the Rose Bowl project. This is an exciting project for us. Um, just to be uh, involved with such an elite space is, is, is pretty, pretty amazing. So thank you very much. Uh, we are going to be proposing two design options for the Rose Bowl project. Both options are modular. Uh, and both will uh, do exactly what you folks need, and both are at different price points and also have different pros and cons for their use in the space. First option, we could produce a large modular table that's made up of a series of tops, cases, and pedestals. These will be designed so that they can be disassembled easily and then stored and put away in carts like you see here. Pros to this design is that you're not limited to the overall look of a project because of the nature of the pedestal and cases it allows you to create a very elegant design that can be assembled and disassembled. The cons to this is that it can be more difficult to assemble and disassemble. So the number of people required and the amount of time it takes to assemble and disassemble could take a day, a day and a half to, to get done. This is also a more expensive option because you're fabricating more parts and pieces and you're also fabricating carts to store everything. Depending on the facilities group, this may or may not be an option worth exploring. A second option will be a folding and rolling modular option. Uh, this is just one example of a folding and rolling modular table. We've done many, many modular tables in the past. As I'm presenting these two options, I do want to take a minute uh, before I do that and talk a little bit about materials. Throughout this video, you're going to hear me talk about three different material options. So you're going to hear me talk about laminates, you're going to hear me talk about wood veneer, and you're going to hear me talk about solid dimensional wood. So if you picture lumber, so dimensional solid wood that uh, ends up being a specific thickness that we will process as parts and pieces for a table. Wood veneer, imagine that same stack of wood sliced up very, very thin. So then you, you end up with sheets of veneer, shapes and patterns. And what's nice about this material is that because we handle and process all of this internally, uh, thinking about an elliptical table, like this one, what you end up with here is because we do all the veneer processing ourselves, we can have all the parts and pieces tapered and angled so that you have a radial pattern of the wood. It's a very beautiful way of stitching up veneer. The last material I'm going to talk about is laminate. Laminates are lovely and they're extremely durable. They're cost effective. So when you hear me talk about laminates, we are talking about different colors and textures and patterns. They've come a long way over the years. And you know, we like these options as highly durable materials. So uh, those are the three things that you'll hear me talk about. Solid dimensional wood, wood veneer, and laminate. Uh, I want to switch now and get into the presentation. With the help of Charlie uh, on Lauren, we were able to gather information. They sent over some floor plans showing the overall size of the home locker room. And then some images here that allows me to create a 3D model of the space. So here's a 3D model showing the home locker room. So if we look around here, we're able to draw that space out so that when we build and start showing a table, we have a good understanding of what it looks like in the space. Now, one of the other great things about uh, the world we live in today is that I was able to track down a 3D model of the stadium, which allowed me to then create an ellipse that matches the actual ellipse of the stadium. So the designs that I'm going to show you, the ellipse is that of the actual stadium that we have in the room. Uh, I want to talk first about the more expensive and the more time consuming option that is comprised of cases and pedestals. I'm going to go here to our enclosed option. If this is the option that is selected and you'd like to move forward, this option will be fabricated with multiple top sections, multiple pedestals and multiple cases the user side, these panels will have doors on them. So these doors will open, they will reveal a series of hand knobs that are used to secure all the parts and pieces together. All these parts and pieces will then live uh, on a cart. Those carts will be wheeled out of the space and into storage and then brought back whenever the table needs to be reassembled. Now this process, depending on who's doing it and how many times it gets done, it'll start off probably taking a couple days to get done. And then as folks get used to the process, it'll become much easier 
as you go along. Now, this table design, we can include branding on the cases, like you see here. We have options for that. If the traditional rose from the Rose Bowl stadium is preferred, we can use that as an option as well. We're uh, presenting just one here in this option, and I'll show another here in just a second. So the enclosed cases and pedestals, a great option. It does have a nice closed look but it will be a little bit more difficult to assemble and disassemble. I think with some feedback from Charlie and Lauren, we went ahead and created option two. That option ends up being a large modular option that relies on a series of bases with casters. So this option, it's a series of 12 tables. The overall size of this assembled table, it's 26 and a half feet long and it's 22 feet wide and it will seat 30 chairs, each of those chairs with 30 inches of space per user. So very, very comfortable and with the maximum amount of 30 users that was requested. As we get into this space, you can see here, so the tables themselves uh, are made up each a top, a curved modesty panel, and then two legs that are what we call a T-base, and each of those bases has casters on them to allow you to move and roll that very, very easily. Logo, if we want to introduce the branding, this is what it would look like if we introduced the Rose logo on that modesty panel. Now this could be smaller, this could be larger, and this could be incorporated in several different ways. This logo can be introduced as a traditional wood inlay. It could also be done as a digitally printed graphic on laminate. So we have several options that we're going to price and present in a formal quotation document for you. And this is just one of those examples that you're seeing here. The table that you're looking at now, it is made up of several uh, different materials. What I'm showing here is a laminate surface, which is the field of the table. So if you remember, this laminate is a highly durable material, and the edge of the table would have a solid dimensional lumber glued onto each edge. So the front edge and the back edge here will be solid sapele, which is in the mahogany family, and then the field of the table would be a laminate. And we'll be pricing that out as a wood veneer as well, so you can see the difference uh, between each. For this presentation, I will be showing the laminate option with the solid wood edge. As we move forward here in the different scenes, what's great about this program is it can allow you to actually put yourself in the position of a chair. So if I'm seated uh, in one of these chairs, this is gonna be the view. As I look right and left, you can see here uh, that's how it'll look and feel seated at this large elliptical table. So there's that enclosed option versus the modular option. Modular option, just to get into some of the details about this table option, on the back side of each of these tables, so they roll, they fold, so they will fold down. There is a handle that is on this side of the table. It's a little handle you pull with, uh, you just grab that, pull that handle, and it rotates the top and folds that top over. And the way that the tables are connected together, there's ganging hardware. So this is hardware that's pre-installed and lives on the underside of the table. And so you rotate each of these together, closes and locks those tables in position. So it does two things, levels the tabletops to each other because they're snug to the underside of the top. Uh, and then also pulls them tight together so that you get a nice uh, seam when all the tables are assembled. It's not gonna be wonky or you know, this, when it's all together, you get a nice flat surface throughout. Another detail that we're showing is an undermounted power port. Each of these power ports will have two power and then two powering USB. They are daisy chainable product. So that means that uh, all of the power ports will actually link together. I did not draw the cord, but there's a cord that comes off here, goes to the edge of this table, and then another one here that goes to this edge, and you plug table into table, and that carries power throughout. Now there's a limit, we're gonna get six of these tables off of one power infeed cord 
and the other six off another power infeed cord. So you will have two cords that go from one table to a plug, and then another set of the six will go from one plug into the floor. So you'll power six tables from one outlet. Very convenient, keeps things nice and clean as you're working. After emailing back and forth with Charlie, uh, I got the impression that the facilities group and the folks here would probably prefer this option. Now, as far as the finishes go, these are things that we will work with you to determine what the final finishes are. For this part of the process, which is step one, this is what we would call our collaboration with 3D conceptual modeling. So what I've got here is a nice 3D model that allows me to then create some nice photorealistic renderings so that you can get an idea of what this would look like uh, in the space. So uh, this is a quick test rendering that was done to show what this particular option would look like. I think given the finishes that are here and existing in the locker room, the finishes that I'm showing here would make a nice addition to the space. We will be supplying you with physical samples that you can take into the room and make those, those hard decisions about the final finishes uh, together as a group. So uh, this leads me into our process. We're here in step one, uh, doing the collaboration and doing the conceptual 3D modeling. Step two, what I'm gonna be providing, and I will send this information to Charlie, is I'm gonna provide a formal quote. So that formal quote is gonna look something like this, where it's gonna have several different options for table finishes and designs, and then also a page that's gonna have our terms, our schedule, our warranty, and then a little blurb about our process. After we submit that information, to continue the process, we would require a formal commitment to work together. So what that means is that we would receive either a PO or a 50% deposit to get this project in our build queue. Once we have that deposit in hand, I will take this information that we've started and I will hand it off to our project management and engineering departments. It's their job to take what we started and create a document that lays out exactly what we intend to do. It will be a document that has renderings, and they will have detailed information about what we intend to do. And along with this, they will be sending physical samples to choose from. Before any fabrication begins, we don't do anything until we get approval on design, on the specification, and on finishes. Once we have that information, step five is to begin fabrication. During the fabrication process, it goes to our shop, and then we have a pre-finished inspection. We will set the table up and take pictures before anything goes into the finishing department. And then step six is everything comes out of the finishing room and gets set up for final photos. So just to give you an idea of what this looks like, let's go picture folders. We're gonna go progress. So as we're building, Here's the pre-inspection photos. We set it up, we inspect it, and we take photos of everything. And then after everything gets broken down into the finishing department, right before we package it up and ship it, we then set it up for our final installation. And so here's some photos. After we do our finish, we set it up, make sure everything's exactly as it should be take photos for documentation, and send these to you folks as well. After that, everything gets packaged up. And to give you an idea of what that looks like, every part and piece, because we're a custom shop, its own box, its own crate, to give you an example of how our products ship. Here's an example. So every part and piece gets wrapped up with boxes, gets cardboard corners, shrunk wrapped, foam underneath as well. Everything gets strapped down to a pallet that we create for the project. And then after that, we create a crate. Our tables travel very safely all over the country and all over the world. So that's our process. Thank you folks for taking the time to watch this video. I appreciate your help, Charlie and Lauren. I think this is gonna be a wonderful addition regardless of which option is selected. We are excited to be helping. We are excited to continue the process. We're excited to continue the collaboration with you folks. Thank you very, very much.